Hello, wherever you are in any part of the world. Hello from my heart to yours. Welcome to Down Ballot. We do the show live every Tuesday at 7.30 p.m. Pacific right here on Twitch. That's twitch.tv slash Echoplex Media. You can support this project by going over to eplex.store, buying some merch, or uh, picking up a membership there. Members at $5 there or higher get uh, all our podcast recording sessions, the entire thing beginning to end. Audio and video sent to their inbox. They get it the next day instead of having to wait two days for the podcast. Um, you can also get uh, that at patreon.com slash echoplex. But if you're not sure which one to do, do eplex.store because we're big boosters of fourth wall around here. Um, I'm producer Dave and you can find me on Grinder. I am uh, unsure where my co-host is, but the show starts at 730. So uh, we're going to get going here with the week's local news. In a story we've been following, Oakland's mayor, Sheng Tao, uh, had her house raided. And um, I don't know what it's in relationship to. Um, completely unsure what it's in relationship to, but, um, I don't know, maybe my co-host knows a little bit more about it. 
Hey, Mr. Co-host, well, go ahead and introduce yourself. Hey there, everybody. This is the Councilman coming at you live. Can you hear me okay? Yes. Beautiful. Uh, well, you can find me just about anywhere. Fortunately, you could find me about two minutes ago, asked out on the couch. <laughs> So, uh, but no, totally live and in effect and rocking a brand new device this week. So hopefully shit don't crash. Yeah. It seems like, uh, it seems like the, uh, everything is better. That's bad. That's fabulous to know. So it looks like I have a new setup moving forward. Very, very good. Very good. So, um, we've been covering this story about Shing Tao and, uh, she, uh, uh, took an interview. It looks like, and, um, she did nothing wrong. That's apparently what she has to say. Um, this is a short clip, and then we have a more of extended clip of this interview later on if we want to like dice through that. But for now, let's get the highlights. And that is because Oakland Mayor Shang Tao was here in the studio. It's her first sit-down interview since the FBI raid on her home. There are other things happening at City Hall right now. Today, the City Council is going to be discussing the budget, and that is a big reason. That is the reason she came in, and I had a chance to talk with her today. But I also I had a chance to ask her about uh, the big issue that everyone's talking about. And that was the raid on her home. Mm -hmm. And um, so we talked a little bit about that. She, of course, couldn't comment a lot about that. But I wanted to play a little bit mm. of what she said to me just a few minutes ago. Take a listen. You denied any wrongdoing in your okay. speech last week uh, after the FBI raided your home. Have you met with the FBI since the raid? You know, I can't speak on an ongoing investigation, but what I can say is I'm cooperating with the FBI 100%, and not just that, I am not the target. More so than that, you know, if I find any information that I can share, I'm going to be 100% transparent with the community. What we're focused on is running the city, working off of the progress that we've already made in just the short period of time 18 months. Can you say if they took anything from your house or why they, why, if you're not the target, why they closed your house to do? I wish I could say more. I, I really do. But again, it's an ongoing investigation, so I cannot say further. Separate from the raid, though, there was some talk, though, of your partner, Andre Jones. Is he involved in any kind of uh, work with your administration at all? Oh, absolutely not. I mean, he is my partner. He is his own person. And so with that being said, again, this is an ongoing investigation. So, your, But your former chief of staff, Regina Webb, she came up publicly and mm -hmm. said that the FBI questioned her about him. Mm -hmm. Had you heard that before she had said something about it? So she was my chief of staff on yeah. the city council. Mm -hmm. And so with that being said, it's an ongoing investigation. Yeah. And uh, we can't say further, more info give out further information. And you can't say anything about, about but Andre Jones has nothing to do with your administration at all. You could say that. For oh, sure. absolutely. All right. And one more question. Do you have any association with the Duong family? The houses, their houses were also raided on the same day that your um, house was also raided too. What is your association with them just in general, apart from anything that might be going on? So what I can say about mm -hmm. that is that you can see that uh, associations or whatever have you that you would consider association is that everybody was actually, you know, we take pictures with everybody. And so you can see that other electives have taken pictures with them as well. And so, but that's all that I can <laughs> Oh, that's not, not great. Uh, everybody took pictures with these fucking crooks actually. <laughs> <laughs> right we all we all you know did the bad so it's all good right so um, i wonder where these were these because there's a there's a way in which sure at a campaign event you could take a picture with somebody and have no idea who they are but it it happens constantly um oh hello hello <laughs> it happens constantly um people just wander into frame in pictures all the time and you never know who they possibly could be so the, the uh, other thing is just like at a campaign event, you don't have time to like sit there and fucking background check everybody while you're doing the part where you take the selfies. But I'm not confident that that's <clears throat> what's happening here. I think these were probably not like just, oh, I'm at a campaign event for the mayor and I've <clears throat> taken a picture with this person. No, I mean, these, these definitely look like more of your um, more involved. You know, these are very special supporters of mine and I'm you know, making sure that I'm getting a photo with them so that they can share it with their friends and see that they have influence with me, right? Like, it's def these are definitely staged in that way. Not not in the way that, like, you pay a bunch of money to go see Biden or someone or, you know, speak or Trump and you just sort of want, you get in a line and they, you know, snap a picture of you. Um, these are people they know or at least they know who they are um, or they've been told who they are <laughs> and told that they need to take, take a picture with them because they gave them a lot of money. Right. And I mean, if this, if they don't, if this organization, these people donated to the campaign, that's kind of all on the record anyway, right? 
Oh, very much so. I mean, especially in California, we have um, very strict disclosure laws about who's donating to what campaigns. Um, of course, you know, 501c4s and other you know, pseudo PACs don't necessarily have to report all that information, but the candidates do. Um, so if you've if you've received money from anyone, uh, it's it's publicly searchable and and uh, it's a part of a database. So um, it's it's pretty pretty decent system, but um, it, it requires oversight. It requires people actually looking and minding the till, right? The, the, the reporting is all there and the, the numbers are all there, but if no one's actually, you know, watching it and seeing and, you know, calling people on their, their grift, um, the grifts go on. An ongoing investigation. And so uh, we are not able to talk about that. So you heard the mayor uh, right there. Uh, she couldn't comment a whole lot. Uh, we tried to, to ask her a, a lot about what happened there because a lot of people are curious about, yeah. about of course, what happened there. Yeah. Um, but um, but that's really what she would say about the investigation, about um, any talk of her partner being involved, yeah. any association with the Duong family, yeah. the three houses. Uh, Zhong, it's Zhong, sorry. At the same time, her house was raided last week. So, so that's what we're getting at the moment. Right now, the mayor is heading back to City Hall at this moment. She's going to be discussing her budget proposal Right. She's hoping the sale of the Coliseum mm -hmm. will help to patch up a big hole okay. in that budget. That is her hope. Million. Yeah, yeah. And you'd have to pay me to take the Coliseum. You take the <laughs> Coliseum is worth one hundred and five million dollars. Okay. She's hoping to take sixty three million dollars from okay. the sale and plug that hole in that budget. We're going to break everything down for you and have it for you coming away. At noon. Good. I was going to say, where do we see this? Yeah, we're going to have it at noon coming up okay. and on uh, later newscast. We're also going to be putting the entire discussion we had on the Fox local app and at KTV.com as well. All right. Good work. Very nice. Very nice. So, um, the, the, so one of the things that they're missing, and I, I haven't, I looked around a little bit. I don't know because sometimes what uh, law enforcement will do, and you uh, you don't even have to fucking think about why, is not only will they raid you on the same day, they'll raid you at the same fucking time. Mm -hmm. Oh, for sure, and, and uh, it's in their interest to do so, right? Like you don't want to alert anyone who might have information or uh, evidence uh, that would be valuable to the investigation uh, because they might you know, destroy it inadvertently or inadvertently or um, compromise it in some other way and compromise the raids in other people's places, um, especially if there was some sort of, uh, you know, conspiracy, right, um, going on. So, yeah, uh, absolutely understandable. And so I, I give her benefit of the doubt in that, you know, she didn't have notice. They wouldn't notify anyone whether they were a target or not. Um, but you have to think that there's something to the fact that they, this is the mayor and they didn't, you know, it, it she's she's she is caught up in this to the point where they had a synchronized raid and it included her house right and they didn't want to let her know for whatever reason right because they were concerned um or they didn't know what would happen if they let her know so that that is concerning in and of itself but she's not the only one at all who is involved with these folks um it's up and down the state and the, the state attorney general is wrapped up in it evan lowe is wrapped up in it so many people on all sides are wrapped up in it because these are the kind of guys who you know the folks who run major contractors like waste uh, management services, these are huge contracts with cities and counties, right? We're talking tens of millions of dollars kind of contracts. So, uh, and sometimes hundreds, if it's talking about like Los Angeles. So it, you know, it absolutely is in their best interest to grease the skids and spread the money around and give money to everybody, right? So everyone's tainted by this in some way, more than likely. Should I even think I might've taken money from these guys <laughs> when I ran for council. Um, so, you know, it, it's, it's part of this, uh, unfortunately the cost of doing business. Um, if you, if you're willing to, you need to get, raise money to run and run a campaign and you're willing to take it from whomever, then you're going to get stuck in something like this sooner or later. And I mean, it could be that she knew them, but that they were up to some shady business. She knew them and she had nothing to do with them. Yeah. Nothing to do with the shady business, had no knowledge of it, but that, <clears throat> Had they been raided, the that she might have been like, uh oh, gotta 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 got a scrubby scrub, and right, <clears throat> even though right. maybe she did nothing wrong with, but in that case, then she would have been committing a crime and doing the scrubby scrub. A lot of times yeah, you get busted in the conspiracy, you actually get busted for covering it up versus uh, engaging in the criminal acts. Right, right, and and at the end of the day, she may not have done anything wrong and still attempted to, you know, scrubby scrub just to keep herself, you know, as clean as she possibly could. Right. And, and out of like that sense of uh, impending, you know, doom that any, every politician feels, I'm sure at some point, um, not wanting to create a crisis. Right. Uh, 
trying to avoid the crisis as, as much as possible up until the bitter end. Um, even if you did nothing wrong, right? Because you just don't want the appearance of, of anything being uh, improprietaries. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see. Because the thing is, she's like, oh, all these other people had pictures. I didn't hear about any other officials being raided in conjunction mm-hmm. with this. Yeah. Um, not raided. Yeah, for sure. Um, many elected officials had to answer to you know donors on their roles that were either you know these guys directly the Zhengs, by the way not Duong Zheng, um uh or uh so, you know their affiliates or the people that they were the, the straw donors is what they call them they're propping up they're giving them money to donate to specific campaigns so um, i also want to just the word raid <clears throat> sort of has some implications i have a feeling this was a knock knock situation <laughs> No, you don't think it was like a no-knock you know, kind of situation? Um, just breaking down the door? Yeah, no, very much so. Knock, knock. This was, I would call this executing search warrants in, in conjunction with one another, more more than because sure. a raid draws brings up the idea of like throwing a flashbang through the window or right. and sh- people killing, being, killing your dog, that kind of, it's just, you know, police <laughs> stuff. People being let out in, you know, handcuffs and uh, perhaps, or potentially shot for no reason. Um, uh, so yeah, that, that definitely does have a different kind of connotation. But it's what do we expect how long have we been doing this show and local news is nothing if not sensationalized so they love to use you know lingo to get their stories uh, more make their stories more appear more interesting to folks that that is true so we're going to move on to winners and losers where there are no winners unless unless you happen to be rooting for somebody and then they fucking lose <laughs> like it's typically the case typically the case so what uh, we got first here well uh Get, get one one pandemic you close the door on one pandemic right and god opens a window or something like that anyway uh if we don't have enough to worry about with the resurgence of covid if we don't have enough to worry about with 106 degree heat um along the bay here uh now we have the measles to worry about we're gonna find out why oh, i love that fucking headline here let's let this ride now, Santa Clara <laughs> County health leaders are now working to alert dozens of people who may have been exposed to measles. They say the hypercontagious virus was brought into the county by someone visiting from out of state. As NBC Bay Area's Marianne Favre reports, they're specifically concerned about three places that person visited. Can you pause for a second? Health- uh, yes. What do you, just real quick. What do you think, before we get into the story, what do you think was the point of her holding that iPad in that, in that shot? Make it look like she was uh, reading something. Yes. Okay. Just wanted to be sure. Okay. Um, you know, I bet that, um, and I, this is a little off topic. We, we're not going to spend a lot of time here, but I bet yeah. if they have um, like a teleprompter, I'd be willing to bet their iPad is synced up to that. So if the teleprompter goes out, they crashes. Can... Good call. Good call. That's what I'd do. Good call. I, I hope I'd, I hope I'd that's suggest the that they hire me, but these organizations don't have these organizations barely have as much money as the people who fucking donate to my Twitch channel. So they should hire you then. Did <laughs> person visited the Bay Area? They got on a flight at San Jose International Airport, potentially infecting more than 90 Santa Clara County residents on that flight. This Starbucks on Blossom Hill Road in Los Gatos is one of three places county health leaders say a person with highly contagious measles visited on July 1st, sometime between 9.30 and 11.30 in the morning. The sick person then dined at Taqueria Los Pericos on Water Street in Santa Cruz from 6 to 10 p.m. the same day. Doctors say the next morning the infected person headed to San Jose (laughs) International and was there from 5.15 to 7.30 in the morning before catching a Southwest flight to Chicago. Now public health leaders are trying to reach more than 90 Santa Clara County residents on that flight who may have been exposed and warning anyone who visited those businesses that they should watch for symptoms. One of the challenges is that measles stays in the air. So even after a person with measles leaves um, a room or an area, uh, the measles virus can stay in the air for um, up to an hour or more after that person has left and they can still continue Ooh. to infect the person even though they're not even there. Dr. Michael always says it's important you take action if you think you've been exposed. And the main things that they should be doing is one, checking their immunization status, making sure that they have a vaccine against um, measles. Second, if they are pregnant, an infant or immunocompromised, or if they aren't vaccinated, that they contact their healthcare provider immediately. 
Symptoms of measles include a red blotchy rash, cough, runny nose, red eyes, nausea, vomiting, and diarrhea. Oh, is that if you it? have these symptoms, contact your doctor and isolate immediately. Dr. Roy says if you've had a measles vaccine, it offers very strong protection against the virus, but it is not foolproof. In San Jose, mm-hmm. Marianne Favreau, NBC Bay Area News. Out of town visitors nice. bringing measles to San Jose. Seriously, it's those Audi towners that, you know, got, got to get rid of them, man. We got to close the borders. We got to shut down the airport. I think, personally, I don't want to get measles. Well, I think I'm vaccinated. Yeah, yeah. Maybe, maybe. I mean, or don't, isn't that one of those ones you get when you're a kid and they don't, you don't really give you an option? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, I mean, hopefully, hopefully. Yeah, yeah. You're get, or they, at least the schools don't. Like, you got to get this or you're not coming to school, kid. Right. Um, so so this, this is, school. this is one of those where, you know, better Santa Clara County than some other places because the Santa Clara County, just the overall like vaccination rate, I think it's one of the positive downstream effects of the like science and engineering and biotech culture of uh, the Bay Area is that the counties in the Bay Area proper, like right around, you know, the, you know, the counties we could like the ones that touch the at some point touch the Bay, those counties, yep. Yep. those the, the, the vaccination line. rates tend to be pretty fucking high, especially for things yeah. like measles. Very so, much. So. I think Solano's always one that's lagging. So Solano, get your ass in gear. Get your shit together. <laughs> um, don't yeah, worry. So Peter Thiel. Thiel Peter Thiel will force vaccinate everybody via drone. <laughs> so, so public service announcement: Make sure you're, you're vaccinated. Make sure you're, you're watching out for strangers from out of town at Starbucks and at Los Pericos, which is actually a very good taco stand, by the way. If you've very ever good. been there, very good. Um, I hope nobody there right. got sick. My God. God, well, I hope not. I mean, except maybe with the Alpa store. Sometimes you never know. Well, you know, you, you take you take your chance. You you know, it's a it's a risk you're willing to take. Absolutely, for the the. I mean, it's it's going to taste great going down, regardless. Yeah, yeah, that's for sure. <laughs> so, I mean, out of towners, it just seems like somebody they know has measles came around. I think there's got there's. I'd be surprised if we see one case just due to the the high uh, vaccination rate, and especially because, yeah. <clears throat> you know the the anti-vaccine movement as we know it today has only been really strong for the last 10 years. So it's going to be, be like people like 10 and under maybe who would be in that. And then like, there's not a lot of them at Starbucks or at the, the taco shop at any particular time. So, yeah, I, I think a lot of this was also the County just covering being, you know, the County public health being doing a good job and covering their butts and saying like, Hey, we had, we're taking abundance of caution. We're notifying everyone who might've been, you know, um, uh, impacted by this or might have been in contact or I guess in contact like an hour afterwards with a room where this person had been. <laughs> um, there's so like the the viral version of the perfume that stays in the elevator for five days, you know, after someone <laughs> leaves. Um, or like you go you to know, an abandoned mall and you just sniff around and you can find out where they were spritzing people. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so the, the viral version of that. So anyway, I think this is the county taking an abundance of caution and just being diligent. And that's what we expect. They are one, they are one of the top county public health departments in the country uh, for a reason. Yep. So uh, up next, it looks like the <clears throat> San Francisco has gained authority to clear home, homeless encampments due to a recent uh, court uh, decision. Let's take, a, let's take a listen to see how uh, Fox 2 talks about this. San Francisco now has more legal authority to clear away homeless encampments. The city was handed that victory in a court ruling. And as KTVU's Ali Rasmus reports, it means laws can be enforced that prohibit sitting, lying, or even living on public property. Six years ago, Ashley Jones was living on the streets of San Francisco. I didn't think I was going to make it because I'd sleep in the parks here and there. He says he was able to get into a shelter and get back on his feet. He now lives in his own apartment, but he understands why some people refuse an offer to stay in a shelter. Most people are not going to go to most. There's, so the shelters are about 300 people, 250 guys, 50 women, two by three bunks. If you can imagine being in a cabin or campsite, we go to summer camp, that kind of stuff. But it's not summer camp. You have to fingerprint. You have to take a picture. It's hard to be in a lights out 10 to 6. Recent court rulings will make it more difficult for unhoused people to refuse shelter beds or camp on city streets. Yesterday, the Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals lifted what had been a temporary ban in San Francisco on widespread sweeps of homeless encampments. It comes in the wake of the U.S. Supreme Court ruling last month that it is constitutional for cities to cite and even arrest people for sleeping in public spaces. Cities will end up being a a bit more aggressive because voters complain about this. When asked how aggressive San Francisco's homeless camp policies will become, 
Mayor London Breed's office didn't share specifics, but in a statement they said, quote, conversations with the city attorney are underway to inform our next steps, including how policies and procedures are updated. I think we will see more crackdowns and without necessarily having to spend the money to provide services like uh, shelter. The statement from the mayor's office goes on to say that the city will still offer shelter beds for people it moves off the street, but that, quote, we cannot allow for people to refuse services and shelter when offered and available. Oh. Even so, the Ninth Circuit court order yesterday says San Francisco is still under court order not to throw away people's belongings, a requirement stemming from a lawsuit the Coalition on Homelessness filed against the city two years ago. San Francisco cannot um, just destroy those belongings and put them in the trash. They need to essentially bag and tag it so that people can retrieve it. And again, we're talking things that have ranged from folks's, you know, medical equipment, pr prosthetics, medications, you know, their vital documents, their, their IDs and really personal belongings. Despite the Supreme Court and Ninth Circuit Court ruling, the lawsuit by the Coalition on Homelessness against the city of San Francisco still stands. Next month, attorneys from both sides will be back in federal court to determine what will happen next. Next with that lawsuit in San Francisco, Ali Rasmus, KTVU, Fox Two News. Well, um, so they can't throw away their uh, prosthetic leg. That's good. Isn't that nice, right? Hopefully not their dog either. Um, yeah, this uh, translation on the statement from the mayor's office is, yeah, now we got the authority, so we're going to change the law so we can do more crackdowns, more sweeps, and throw more unhoused people in jail. Hooray! And I'm sure Brooke, Brooke Jenkins, her um, right-hand woman, is right along them on this and and cheer in the way um yeah it's a it's another win for the you know homelessness is lawlessness uh, crowd uh, just like mayor ed 209 it sounds exactly the same as his rhetoric we cannot allow people to refuse the shelter we offer them we cannot allow, to, allow people to refuse the shit burger that we're feeding them um and otherwise we'll cite them and they're criminals if they don't eat the shit burger um, they've already been dealt the shit burger by life and we're going to give them another shit burger and expect them to, you know, gladly lap it up and applaud us and sing our praises. Is that about, is that about right? Does that sound about accurate? All, all the while, all the while, uh, property developers are allowed to buy, uh, buy up apartment buildings and, uh, just leave them vacant if they don't really feel like, uh, fucking shelling out the money to, uh, renovate them as long as the front yeah. doesn't look all blighted. Or they're allowed to buy the entire Coliseum property for $105 million. That's a huge piece of land, by the way, for $105 million and then develop into, into billion dollar apartments and condos for people who you know uh, can afford it, but not certainly not the people in that neighborhood um, or in this neighborhood or, or these folks. Anyway, yeah. And the, the, the gentrification rocks on. <clears throat> yes. You think that property would be, <clears throat> you think with, especially with everything going bad for uh, Mayor Tao right now, Ooh, that property belongs to, belong to the city of Oakland. Is that right? That property belongs to city of Oakland. It's city. Uh, it's either a joint city county property and maybe the city is trying to sell their share. I don't know. I, uh, it's a little vague to me right now. Um, I know that the Coliseum itself was a joint city county endeavor, um, but I don't know that the land is jointly owned. It might be city land. Man, popping up a bunch of low income housing for people right there sure would be a good fucking move for the fucking Would mayor, that be wouldn't it? That has been discussed. I mean, that, that really, to be honest, that has been the conversation as to uh, can we develop this space into affordable housing, right? That um, that has been the major discussion point. But now it's just like they're trying to sell it just to fill a budget gap. And that's and anyone could snap it up at that point. Yeah, it's short term thinking again, maybe medium term Correct. in this, this case. But longer that term, would you would solve more problems if they built a fucking housing project there. Government yeah, housing you can, project. And you can still solve your revenue problem. There are plenty of large nonprofits that do affordable housing development that would be willing to cobble together the financing to pay you for the land. Um, provided they get to, you know, they get the, the rights and they can, you know, they, they can manage it the way they want. Um, but yeah, there's, there's opportunities out there if they look, if they look at it more that way, but um, they're desperately trying to balance a budget amidst multiple crises um, and a recall effort. And I think that, um, you know, they're just they're I think they're just grasping at straws trying to do whatever they can to hold on. So last year, it feels like last week, but last year we covered the uh, San Francisco police's overreaction to the hill bomb, the Dolores Street hill bomb. <clears throat> so they put up barricades to stop the hill bomb. And that's good because there's only one hill in San Francisco. Right, right. I mean, I, everyone knows that. Right? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> yeah, right. 
<laughs> so the if you could imagine this, the young people were like, well, we have a solution we'll just, for this. <laughs> <laughs> Let's hear about it. <laughs> New at 11, San Francisco police shut down Dolores Street to stop skaters from doing a hill bomb again. All of this comes after skaters clashed with police last year, leading to dozens of arrests. But as ABC7 News reporter Ryan Curry shows us, the road closures didn't go as police planned. There are police everywhere around Dolores Park. The street is shut down. No one is allowed on it. We came here to skate and have fun, but the cops don't want to have to want us have fun. Every <laughs> I love him. <laughs> I love him. It pretty much sums it up, right? <laughs> Put him on the fucking board of supervisors for the for the county and city of San Francisco. <laughs> My God, let's get him for an interview. For a street at high speeds, they call it a hill bomb. But SFPD doesn't want that bomb to go off. Police have set up these barricades for several blocks on Dolores, and look, they're even zip tied together. And if you mm. take a look down the sidewalk, Fancy. you can see they're zigzagging these barricades all the way down. They're making it very clear they don't want anyone skateboarding <laughs> down this hill. Skaters had plans to go down this year, but those plans got altered. Last year, police arrested 100 people after skaters threw things at officers and vandalized a muni train. Oh, police I don't know what order. What you're, you may have the order of events. Uh, a little bit a little bit off there because this event had been happening for a long time and ain't nobody vandalizing no fucking muni train uh they need that train to get home after the hill bomb actually friendo yeah until until the gentlemen and women you see here in the riot gear showed up i don't right. think that there was really ever a problem with this event other than a couple of skaters breaking their faces which is what you do as a skater i mean right. i don't I, I really don't understand what the what the issue is if they're only causing harm to themselves <laughs> doesn't seem like i've ever heard in any side you know, um, whatever, uh, bystanders or just, you know, lookers on getting injured. It's usually just the skaters and they sh certainly expect that. <laughs> I mean, this is the functional equivalent of the SJPD coming in riot gear for bike party, right? That's, that's the functional right. equivalent of this. Yes. Yes. Um, I, you know, yes. I, I, I would say that's the, that's the case. I think for, as far as the, a disruption go to civic life goes, I think bike part might, might even more substantial, right? Because of just the, the roving nature of it and it's, you know, moving about and changing the map, you know, changing the, the route, you know, every, uh, every time out. Um, so in, in ways that's even harder to, to manage in terms of public safety. This is like one thing that frankly, the police could actually, I don't know, fucking partner with the community on, right. And try to keep it safe and make sure that they're working with the, the, the skaters because it is a great value, you know, valuable public community event that everyone seems to like, except for the cops. So, <laughs> if, so the, uh, the, and you know, honestly, the difference, and I'm just going to be straight up is, uh, we've got a lot of problems with mayor Sam Licardo, but one of the things about bike party is, uh, mayor Sam and his wife used to show up at the regroups and dance sometimes. Sure. So, and he's a biker himself. He's a, a biker. He's a bicyclist, he's right? A cyclist, he's, a, he's, yeah. a, he's a cyclist himself. So, and he's been injured himself as a cyclist, you know, um, on the streets. So he, he gets all of that. So in a way that, yeah, that he was certainly the best, probably the best possible mayor for, for the, for bike party and to, it, you know, the timing was right too, because yeah. under his administration, the fucking, the city just backed off a bike party. They just left it alone. And that's been yeah. the, the thing ever since. I don't know what's going on here. Is this a mayor breed? Is this Mayor Breed? Oh, or yeah. Is this, I mean, is this I, community I, members that were complaining about it? I can't imagine it's not. I, this I can't, is so, the, 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 okay, so people don't well, understand. People probably don't know the layout of San Francisco. This isn't Castro Street, but Dolores Park is the Castro. And um, those residents are probably not exactly, they're probably like, oh, the kids are here skating again. <laughs> right. Ho, ho, hooray. Um, jolly, jolly ho. Uh, no, I, I would actually expect that. There have always been complaints about this event. I would absolutely expect that someone, you know, neighborhood folks or whatever, pe people in the neighborhood or otherwise, have always complained about this event. It's just the nature of events anyway, right? If it was a music festival or a drum circle or, you know, a, a, an artisanal farmer's market, there would be someone complaining about it, right? It shut down the street and I don't like that. Um, so I'm sure there were always complaints. The fact that this kind of crackdown happened under Mayor Breed's watch, I think, yeah, it's a direct direct byproduct of her stance and her public safety position and her, you know, and her, and, and the DA, right. Who came in, I think last year, right. Right. on the, the, the heels of the Chesapeake recall and DA Jenkins came in and instituted this, you know, law and order crackdown, um, to sort of basically pull back as much as possible from Chess's uh, regime or, or his, I'm sorry, his agenda. I don't want to say regime. Uh, and, you know, this is another byproduct of it, right? Just like those sweeps. It's all, it's all related. It's all related to this attitude of, you know, uh, vote, the voters we care about, care about this. 
And so we're going to crack down on this. That's pretty much what they're saying. Well, so they don't... known for their ingenuity, the skateboarders found a way. Dun, 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 dun. He wasn't going to tolerate any more violence. The skaters. Wait, well, then don't call the. Don't have the cops show up there and try to. Like, right? <laughs> this, I'm sorry. Uh, riding a skateboard down a hill very quickly is a nonviolent offense. Well, they tried to make it nonviolent by putting up the, you know, the bicycle rack um, up and down the hill so that people couldn't walk or drive or skateboard down the hill. ...to work with the city to safely hold the event. The city was not without fair warning about this event. I was in contact with them a year ago, trying to engage about how to make this safer, even in the absence of an official organizer, and they failed to plan to do anything but this. However, residents living near the park are quite happy to see the street closed. It's public safety. It's not about kids not having fun. So we feel strong. Get out of here, tired old queen. Glad to see their presence here today. <laughs> but although one street was closed, that didn't stop the hill bomb. Nice. Unbeknownst to the police, there is another hill in San Francisco. Both police and a large group of people stood by and watched. Mir Lofton was one of the skaters going down the hill. It was like four skaters. They all said Church Street, and everybody heard them, and y'all just came over here. I guess the cops don't care about this one. <laughs> uh. <laughs> Police blocked off Church Street and let the skaters go down the hill. The skaters who set this up hope to send a message to the city. It feels like this is what skateboarding is. This is what it's supposed to be, the community together and skating. We reached out to SFPD asking them why they didn't intervene, and we're waiting to hear back. In San Francisco, Ryan Curry, ABC 7 News. Well, it's the sheriff. Like, did you notice? It's not the, that means the, it's still San Francisco, but it's the sheriff. It's not the, the PD, just FYI. I don't know if the PD was there, but um, yeah, not, maybe this was even the same hill, honestly, and they just turned around and went down the other side of the, <laughs> the fucking hill, right? There are well, many sides to at. a hill. <laughs> they just went to Church Street. Just a couple streets over. Yeah, yeah same, it, same it, might, it, might, it might be the next major street over. Yeah, yeah, same, same hill, just different street. Yeah, yeah so technically, it's not even, yes, technically probably the same hill. You are correct. Right. So uh, I would recommend, frankly, like let's let's take the hill bomb citywide, right? Like do it like bike party, like every do it more than once a year and do a hill bomb like once a month and do it in a different hill and <laughs> challenge, challenge the fucking PD to come, at, come get make, you. Make it like pig skater whack-a-mole. <laughs> right and you know publicize it on all the things that the, the the pd even might have accounts on but you know and challenge them to come come stop you <laughs> or, yeah, we're, you, or we're doing 14 hill bombs next week good luck right. now, here or are the 14 locations that we might be at we're probably only going to show up at three of these right well i was gonna say it's like that uh, is it the superman ultimatum like you know you can't be you can't save both of these people you can only save one, <laughs> one of them so i'm gonna tell you where they both are but you got to pick which one right and it may not be where the bomb is or is that in dark night i forget anyway fuck, it's, fuck like it, a, forget it's like it. a, it's like a fuck it's like a it's like a more fun version of the trolley problem yeah exactly exactly um Charlie leaves the station. And if you notice, the police left them alone. And speaking of trolleys, I didn't hear anything about anybody vandalizing any fucking trolleys. Yeah, or, or like throwing anything or like, you know, getting pissed off. The, the most rational person in the whole interview was that skateboarding advocate who said, hey, bro, we tried to work with the city and they didn't want to work with us. And he's like, this, so. and then the, the, the young black was, man was like, this is what skateboarding is all about, actually. This he he, he yeah. should have said, he should have said community involvement and fuck the police. <laughs> I guess the police don't care about this, bro. <laughs> <laughs> that guy's funny as fuck. Uh, so, uh, uh, yeah, that y'all had go knocking on doors. Did you know the police don't care about your neighborhood? <laughs> <laughs> they care about that street over there, though. Uh, but to be anyway. fair, um, the <clears throat> like it's like you know, there's like ideas of microclimates, but there's also micro socioeconomic areas in that part. Yeah. And I, the Dolores yeah. Park area, is a very desirable place to live with very oh. high rent. Yeah, yeah. For folks who don't know, I mean, this is the place where the, you know, the painted ladies houses, right? The yeah. iconic image of San Francisco, those old Victorian houses, that, uh, that's where these are, is on adjacent to Dolores Park. So yeah, it's absolutely a desirable spot. And I'm sure that old queen is the one who's been complaining every year about this. And finally, she got her way. So Fucking good for the, her. The dad from Full House had had it. <laughs> good for her. Danny Tanner had fucking had it. Oh man, good for him. I forget the name of the other people, but the cool uncle was out there skateboarding. So I mean, it was a big actually Absolutely. kind of like a family feud uh, scenario. Uncle jo Uncle Joey, Uncle, Uncle Joey, Joey was uh, Uncle Joey yeah. was out there on his uh, longboard. I'm uh, sure he fell and broke his arm, but you know. <laughs>
or is it Uncle Jesse? Sorry, Uncle Jesse. Or, or, that's Uncle Jesse. Stamos. Jesse. Yeah, Stamos. John yeah, Stamos, Stamos was out there skateboarding. Yeah, there you go. There you go. <laughs> anyway, his hair, his hair flowing in the breeze. Moving on to a story that I don't know could be Tuesday, a Wednesday, a Friday, Saturday, Sunday. It ended up on Tuesday this week. Um, uh, Jim Lee will be ha- happy to learn that a uh, cloud brightening experiment in the Bay Area has been uh, canceled. Yeah, we covered this before on Down Ballot, so this is actually a follow up. I covered Jim Lee trying to cover this on Conspiracy Bingo. No, it's a double follow up then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bingo. Also, uh, Jim Lee, respond to my email. You did invite me on your show. Respond. Respond. Uh, it'll, be, it'll be round three, Jim Lee. Round three. Round three, Jim Lee. California's climate is getting hotter. The average summer temperature in the Golden State, three degrees warmer than they were 125 years ago. Then why are you wearing a pea coat? Half that increase since Air conditioning. Just showing off. <laughs> but how much should humans interfere with nature? In tonight's Project Earth, Ann Makovic has an update on a controversial experiment in Alameda involving sea salt meant to cool the climate. The climate is changing, the planet is warming, and we are seeing the impacts. Shrinking glaciers and <laughs> that ice sheets. Penguin is a climate change denier. Rising sea levels and more extreme weather. But while the Earth continues to warm... I have that on my computer. Some climate scientists recently got the cold shoulder. We need to know more about this before you come to our city and start the experiments. In early June, city officials in Alameda blocked the scientists from continuing basic research into an experimental approach that might one day help slow global warming. It involves a device that sprays sea salt particles into the air and along the deck of the USS Hornet, which is in Alameda. In the future, this aerosol might be used to brighten clouds so they can reflect sunlight away from the Earth and temporarily cool the planet. But the scientific evidence is lacking. We want to provide the data to understand how this would affect the climate system. The scientists left disappointed. City officials felt they did the right thing. The line of experimentation is very controversial because of the unintended consequences and other parts of the world. But the city of Alameda cannot stop the rest of the world. Some teams are going full steam ahead without the benefit of the evidence. And that is a problem. No one has control over what people do in different parts of the world at this time. There is no uh, regulation in place. There's no global treaty in place about this technology. Lisa Dilling is an associate chief scientist with the Environmental Defense Fund, or EDF for short. At this point, she says we don't know enough to safely deploy cloud brightening or any other form of solar geoengineering, which is why we absolutely think now is the time for doing research on the impacts of this technology. The EDF will finance it. The nonprofit will issue grants to teams around the world to better inform governments. We need to have strong scientific understanding before any decision is made about this. That could be a decision not to use this technology in the future. It could be a decision to use the technology in the future. Back at City Hall, the mayor remains motivated to identify more immediate solutions. Alameda is doing a lot of things to address climate change and global warming. Sea level rise is truly an existential threat to our island community. A threat that requires looking hard at cloud strategies and not just having our heads stuck in them. I can't wait till the phone call. Madison Star Moons calls that blonde lady and screams at her. Seriously? <laughs> what are you doing? Um, well, obviously the mayor agrees with Maddie, so maybe they should get on board with each other. I love that necklace, by the way. It's very nice. Um, but yeah, that, uh, definitely interested in all of the Alameda City Council has to say about science. Um, definitely want to hear more about that. <laughs> I'm shocked that I <clears throat> didn't get any like notice, like in the, the discord where we do the public, like there's a public comment channel in the discord about that meeting. Yeah. I'm pretty surprised, but also like the people that watch this channel do a hell of a job making sure that I find like good stuff for public comments. So that's actually in, like technically like literally like not in my backyard, but, um, it's, you know, a, a short, short trip from where I'm at. So maybe I dropped the, uh, proverbial chemtrail ball on that one. Well, it's worth looking up and, and perhaps you can cover it on a future episode of public comment. I know you got some Shasta going on tonight, but maybe next week or you know, drop, drop oh, it yeah, in or we can drop, we can, oh, Hey, we can drop it into down ballot even for a little bit. We, yeah, we got some, uh, we got Shasta going on cause, uh, we're, we're like behind on our Shasta now cause, uh, nobody's doing it during the day and we're still on last week's, uh, last week's meeting, which is spicy. 
Anyway, well, we're going to move silly, on to silly, get your shit full. together. We're going to move on to get your shit together. This is a, a coastal town of Pescadero. What is democracy? How is chit? Never mind. What are, the, what are they going to fucking let the fish vote? Let's go. Big changes are on the way for a small coastal town. Today, we bring you to Pescadero in San Mateo County. Population, about 600, and that is on a good day. Things there are done differently, especially when it comes to the way they govern. The county says changes are coming in the name of democracy. ABC 7 Building a Better Bay Area reporting. Leanne Melendez yeah. spoke to some residents just, who yeah. like things just the <laughs> Leanne's here to tell us all about it. I mess with perfection is we what love her. people are <laughs> saying. You know, it's simple. In Pescadero, there is this advisory council whose members volunteer for that position. It's been like that for years. Now, instead of volunteering, San Mateo County thinks those positions should be elected by the people. So what's the big deal? Well, change doesn't come easily there. The Spanish word pescadero, loosely translated, means fishmonger. People in San Francisco <laughs> eagerly leave the commotion of the city to travel to this sleepy coastal town where folks do, well, what they do. People like to see a town like this. If you notice down the main street, there's no center line, and we just wave people around. So you can double park like that for, you know, 15 minutes, and people just go around you. If we had a center line, the visitors wouldn't know what to do. <laughs> Outsiders are tolerated on weekends stoned. and in the summer months. There are reasons to come. Duarte's Tavern and its green chili and artichoke soup for one. Never leave without a slice of the Alala berry pie. Quite often, the popularity of this town lies in the acceptance Why are you a murder? that a fast-paced life is often disconnected from nature. Some end up staying. You know, I'm so tired of living Snuff in Los film. Angeles. I just want to go somewhere where I can sleep in the woods, and, you know, maybe grow some vegetables. Patrick Horn did more than... But I also want to be 15 minutes from, you know, a, a city. ...moved to Pescadero. He chose to be part of its municipal advisory council that includes San Gregorio, Pescadero, and Loma Mar. I mean, what would you change? You mess it up. Rob Skinner is also on the council. He likes that each seat is a voluntary position. They haven't had elections here since 2008. Their only role is to advise their county supervisor, in this case, Ray Mueller, who represents them before the board. We have absolutely no authority. Anything we do of consequence has to be approved by the board of supervisors. But this kind of community uh, representation is down. not We're about to change. What is being proposed is an advisory council, this time elected by the people in the area. Seven seats in all. Mueller believes having elected advisory council members will give them more credibility before voters. No shit. They tackle big issues like the housing crisis and the push for more affordable units. I need to know that I have community members who've been elected to weigh on those decisions by the community, have talked about those issues with the community, and that's going to give it more import at the county when we go ahead and move forward with those plans. But the farm workers can't afford to pay for the food that they grow. They live in sometimes squalid, undignified conditions. Horn anticipates running for the same seat he now occupies. I think it's a great idea. Uh, it's America, and this is a democracy. But with democracy comes rules. Things like financial disclosure. Uh-oh. Well, now we'll know who's dirty by who doesn't run. <laughs> who gave you five bucks, Mayor? Spending money on campaigning. Something they never had to do. Why don't you think people would want to disclose their finances? In my case, I'd be embarrassed. <laughs> it's too early to tell how voters scattered along the coast. He's like, my net worth is only three point seven million. To these proposed changes. In fact, I don't even think they know anything about it. <laughs> I, we don't have a newspaper. We, you know, uh, there's no real communications here. Word of mouth. Bill Bishop, who owns an art... Well, there's 600 people. How hard could it be? Like everybody talks to everybody, and uh, the coffee shop is a good place to learn things. What is the most exciting thing that has happened here in, in ages? This might be it. Well, yeah, this might be it. Uh, yeah, we haven't had many changes. Change is never guaranteed, 
But when small town politics means giving your community a bigger seat at the table, locals here say they may be willing to try. So in November, residents there will be asked to vote on two matters. First, should these seats be elected by the people? And two, if the answer is yes, who would you vote for? I don't even know if they're going to get seven people to run for these seats. I love local politics. But even that, those two questions seem so simple yeah. compared to the rest of the Bay Area. I know. It's refreshing, though. It is just decide over some artichoke bread and a lollaberry yes. pie. <laughs> Lovely. I give it a thumbs up. Yeah. Yep. Thanks. Oh, they love that part where they get to vamp a little bit. Yeah, exactly. And talk about Dort's, um, it's Duarte's, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> Leanne Melendez, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> Not Dort's. Um, but yeah, I definitely want to check out that Alalaberry Pie. We should, we should head there and, and talk to those folks and, and maybe do some door knocking for that guy with the hat from Los Angeles. Um, uh, yeah, I, I, this is, this should not at all be an issue honestly i would bet i would bet that they don't they're right they might not get seven people to run but i bet you these seven people will probably throw their hat in the ring and they'll probably get elected by their 600 on a good day neighbors i like that do they like let a few more people you know is it on a nice day did they just let people camp on the street there like they don't in, in, in san francisco <laughs> so the population rises and ebbs and flows with the weather um yeah, no, I, I think this is a great thing. It's democracy in action. I wish they had more authority, right? And they weren't just advisory. I wish they wanted more authority and they weren't just, I'm surprised that these guys don't want more authority. Um, maybe they just like having the title and like being, you know, a big, big person in town or something, right? Um, but yeah, I'm all for this. Uh, let's go. Let's get some votes. 600 votes. I would, I would love to run a campaign for 600 votes. You could knock that many doors in a, a couple days. You know, it would be like, <laughs> hi, be that- I'm back again. Yeah, right. Like I'm, I would go back every day until you voted for me, right? Like that's how easy like, it would be. You so how to get rid of me? I bet you know. I, I bet I could tell you how to get rid of me. Right. You know, that's not, that's not a big money campaign. You just have to find out who's who is a registered voter and who's not. And even then, it's such a small town. Go to every door and and ask people to register to vote if they're not and to vote for you. It's right. fucking simple as that. Right. Even if they're like, "There's no way I'm voting for you," you're like, "That's fine. Could you register anyway?" Yeah, just register and just just mark my name this one time. Forget it. Then you have to worry about it again, right? Yes, you'll be on the county rolls and they'll send you all sorts of information all the time and you never get off the rolls until you die. But hey, just this once. <laughs> so we had, uh, in leading off, we had mentioned uh, Oakland Mayor Sheng Tao. And now here in Down Ballot Watch, it looks like uh, there's an entire interview of hers where she's probably not going to be able to say much. And we'll watch it. We'll watch it, uh, some of this, all of it, very little of it. We'll, we'll, we'll you know. We'll yeah. wing it. We'll I, wing it. I think, it, I think it'd be great if we just tally how many times she says, you know, this is an ongoing investigation. Right. But then she shouldn't be taking interviews. She should be making statements. She'd be like, hey, you know, I'll be ready to take an interview once I have more information for you because I don't want to waste your time. Well, it's, it's, it's just, that's the situation where people were, people were calling on her to speak, right? The recall proponents were calling on her. Where is Sheng Tao? She must speak to this. And she's right. Like she can't speak to a lot of it. And this interview is going to be really boring, but it's like, this is the situation where a politician feels compelled to do the interview and the sort of the tell all, but they don't have anything to tell. Right. Just to be, just to appear like they're trying to be as transparent as possible, even though they can't say anything. Joining me now is Oakland Mayor Shang Tao. Thank you for being with us. We oh, we might get through it. all this. It's only 10 minutes. Lots of things happening today, especially at the city council. Two important things are happening. We want to start with the issue of putting that recall vote either on the November ballot or to hold a special election. Uh, that's going to be voted on today. Given those potential choices, what do you have to say to voters and the city council about what you think they should be doing? You know, uh, the council has yet to vote to put that on, but it is on the council calendar today. There will be meeting that I believe they're starting the meeting right now in regards to that conversation. I do believe that, you know, in regards to the recall, I think that it is outside funders that are coming in to fund this recall. Uh, We know that's happening across the nation, you know, and I also uh, it's my understanding that the Public Ethics Commission is now suing um, the recallers because they are not disclosing who is actually putting in the funds for the uh, for the recall. And so we know that we are in dire straits when it comes to our budget, just like many other big cities in the state of California. This recall is going to cost residents millions of dollars, millions of dollars, and we need to maintain our democracy. Now, do you think that you would even be facing a recall if uh, District Attorney Pamela Price hadn't been facing a recall before you? Do you think that your administration has been tarnished at all uh, by the mounting chorus of opposition um, to her and to her administration? 
You know, I would just say that right when I entered office, right, I, I entered office about 18 months ago and 18 months ago is when the recall started. So I didn't even get to start my job as mayor of Oakland before the recaller started to uh, wanted to uh, recall me. And so at the end of the day, uh, it's less about, you know, the performance of my office or myself. We have huge wins, including Ramondi Park, where we have the ballers playing. We're selling our parcel at the Coliseum so that we can ensure development to create new monies. We need these new monies in the city of Oakland so that we can continue to invest more into public safety. And so with that being said, you know, I do believe that uh, the, this recall effort is actually an effort, a more like a personal effort to um, to remove me out of office uh, more so than it is around my performance. But do you think at all that it is linked to Pamela Price's recall? You know, again, it started at the very beginning, so it's hard to just uh, say that it is connected or it's not connected. Uh, it did just start right at the beginning before Amy took office. OK, so let's talk about something that has certainly added fuel to this issue of the recall, and that's that FBI raid uh, on your home. During the press conference that you had, uh, you questioned, just as you did right now, the timing of the FBI raid and you connected it to the recall effort. Who are you alluding to that is behind this um, uh, connection and what evidence do you have to support that yeah that's right she came out and posited like some weird conspiracy which she shouldn't have done I mean, that was in response to the the not really in response to the raid but it was at her home or that's right the the knock knock at her home uh but yeah it was it was certainly the first thing after that right and so she was kind of in a way responding to it by deflecting and uh, talking about this you know, I can't comment on matters related to ongoing investigation, but what I can share is that I am not the subject of the investigation and I have done nothing wrong. And I expect that there will be opportunities to say more about what's happening, but it, now is not the time. I'm not the subject of the investigation yet. It is, but I just, you know, I want people to know that I'm fully cooperating with the investigation. Again, I'm not the target and I am innocent. Uh, my administration has been, and we are going to continue to really be hyper-focused on the city of Oakland, addressing crimes, addressing the cleanliness and the needs of our communities. So you maintain that you are not the focus of this investigation, but there Absolutely. are some claims that your partner, Andre Jones, um, is connected to the search, that he may be involved in some part. There are also questions about his involvement in your administration. Has he been so, part of the campaign? <clears throat> are they talking about her husband or like a business partner? I know it's probably like, you know, uh, AP style guide to just start referring to people as their partner instead of like wife or, but it, that, that, um, in, in, I think in this case, in an attempt to be like inclusive, they're not really we're not now we're now i'm left with do you mean business partner is that her husband or her fiance or to be honest i'm a little unclear on that point so i'm, I'm uh i need to do a little more of my research but um yeah i'm not not entirely sure but you are right um when especially when there's no marriage involved already right then um they definitely uh defer they default to partner now i mean the word spouse would work although if i was i mean i do have a boyfriend but if somebody ever referred to him as my spouse I would stop talking to that person. I would be like, get out of here. We're not a hundred. Right. That is not my house. <laughs> right. So I would guess that, yeah, it's either a business partner and or a romantic partner. It um, could be your fucking husband. Yeah, I'm, I'm not totally sure. Not well, we'll hear. I think we might get, we might get more out of it. I don't know, but I, yeah, I should do my own research uh, from this point. Time I thought I'd definitely on my administration. list. Administration. What is the connection? You know, those are all rumors and gossip. Um, I, I refuse to answer rumors and gossip, but I can assure you that he it was never on uh, my on the council with me or in the mayor's office or what have you. It's pretty ridiculous and easy to figure out that that's not the case. But there is a lot of rumors going around, you know, um, and uh, all of that will be more transparent in hopefully the days and the months to come. Do you believe that all these allegations against you and the connection to your uh, these alleged connection to your uh, partner is um, centered on removing you from office? Do you think these are politically motivated? You know, at this point, again, I can't comment on the ongoing investigation, uh, but, you know, I think that people can look at what happened, when it happened and make their own minds up. OK, so let's talk about one other part of this FBI raid and then we're going to move off of that. What is your relationship with the Duong family? Their houses were also sure. searched that same day. What can you tell us about that? You know, I can't tell you any about that. I don't know much about that at all. But you do uh, know the Duong you, family. I can tell you I can tell you that I know many families. Right. I can tell you that. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, I have many black friends. <laughs> 
this this actually would be the time for transparency. Be like, my understanding is that they're a substantial donor to my campaign and the campaigns of many other local officials. Yeah, um, they're absolutely. not friends of mine. We don't we don't we don't really associate socially. But you know, I you know anybody could anybody could find out actually that they uh, are you know they they're movers and shakers. Yeah, this this stuff the the language she's using like I would cringe if I was her comms director because like you know we are innocent. Okay, no one said you were guilty, right? Like, right. <laughs> um, I know many families. Okay, no one questioned that. We were asking about this one particular family. Do you happen to know who they are? <laughs> right. The, uh, the, 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 you could distance yourself while telling the truth. You go, the, you just, yeah. just be like, listen, yeah. we're, we, we're, I don't know, we colleagues. We, we, you know, you, you would see us on the guest list at many of the same parties. They're involved in local politics. They've donated right. to my campaign. Um, but outside of that, I, you know, we, we, we aren't really, uh, you know, connected socially, you know, you could, there's a great way to answer that where you answer, tell the truth, but then you'd be like, but they ain't my homies. Right. And you don't imply there's some grand conspiracy between the FBI and the proponents of your recall, no matter who right. they are, Jesus right. To, to, to impugn you in this situation. Right. Obviously this is just really bad timing. Um, uh, more than likely right or it's just a sign that you've got bigger problems that the recallers maybe the recallers aren't recalling you for but maybe you've got bigger issues that maybe they should be thinking about recalling you for um so yeah it, it just smacks of like incredible defensiveness so even if she is as she said had did nothing wrong and there's no you know she's not the target and ends up being not you know not the target ends up being you know completely cleared of any wrongdoing um She's not doing herself any good in the near term or the long term by taking this tack because it just looks bad and she looks guilty. And also, something. like with something like this, you you would hedge. You go as far as I know, n neither I nor my husband are the are the targets of this investigation. I'm not a hundred percent sure why our home was searched. Uh, we're right. endeavoring with our with our with our legal counsel to find that out, and I'm going to cooperate with the FBI. Then right. again, they ask you about this family, and you go, "Hey, everybody knows that family." but they're not my right. friends. Like I'm not right. Like, I, but it comes, <clears throat> that's it. It comes back to, it comes back to why, why was your house rated then? Right. Why wasn't attorney general Bonta's house rated or Evan Lowe's house rated, you know, because they all took money from these guys too. So if that's, that can't be just it, that can't be the only thing that they're looking right, at the, here. Because, I mean, those answers and you're, that would be counting on the, uh, the interviewer to clap back with, okay, well, why your house? Right. And you're, right. you'd be making a calculated risk, hoping that they wouldn't. Right. And, <clears throat> Well, Jessica Geary has the glasses on, so right. she's probably going to follow I just up feel on. like there's just so many ways to like, to just say, hey, you know, we are actually professionally associated as they're professionally associated with a lot of other uh, local and state politicians, but I'm not, you know, really uh, affiliated with them socially or, you know, there's like, there's some way to fuck it because you know, you're getting that question, but oh, her comms families. person, we learned last week when your computer uh, I don't know, melted that her comms person quit. So maybe she's, yes. fly, maybe she's, maybe she's winging it out there. Yes. That's, <laughs> that could very well be the case. Anyway, we're, we're uh, around, we're around mayor Tao. We're around, you don't know. You could, we're, you we're could here. deny, I'm, you could deny all, all association with the, uh, four shell companies that we would be operating under to give you proper advice for this kind of crisis management. I am available. I have a shingle out there. You can find me, the councilman, <laughs> at T H E underscore councilman. Business here in the city of Oakland. I meet with other business owners as well. And so it's not like it's something that it's extra special or what have you. You know, it is just me meeting with multiple different business uh, owners in the city of Oakland to understand better how the city can actually uh, do better in regards to supporting the business. No, you don't say this at all. No, 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 no. This is not what you say. About oh, the people that gave you money. We, we, these people gave me money. I was trying to support their business and then we all got raided. It is not the fucking <laughs> narrative, dude. Get the fuck out especially, of here. Especially when you're, th you're talking about it like it's a, like a, uh, you know, a, a boot maker or some sort of, you know, um, boutique, uh, you know, salon or some sort of small business and some, some sort of, uh, minority owned coffee shop or something, right? This is a, a major, waste hauler <laughs> that has contracts with cities up and down the state right this is not some sort of small business that's rooted in oakland which is again which the, the way to say that is you just say hey this is a very large contractor in their industry and i have met with uh, representatives of this company as many mayors have but and i don't really have expect. any ties with them yeah. outside of that yeah if they just and oh i uh you know to be honest with you i'm you know 
I, I know lots of families and they all give me money <laughs> and I, and they can all meet with me anytime they want. And I'll talk about how I can help their business. Listen, what I'm telling you is that I'm for sale, but it was entirely legal as far as my, <laughs> as far as I know. And as far and as I'm willing to is, talk about it. And the sad thing is that's probably true. You know, like at the end of the day, it's probably entirely true, right? Like you can, you can take, they take politicians take money from folks all the time and they either do their bidding or they don't. Um, uh, so it happens all the time. It's not like this is anything out of the ordinary. It's just out of the ordinary that your house, you know, gets searched by the FBI. Let's not say rated. Let's say searched. Whatever. It's, you just, no one else had their house rated. She sucks so bad at this at this point that what you say is, "Hey, listen, this is an ongoing investigation." And uh, in addition to advice from my attorneys, I was the FBI also had asked that I uh, not, not take interviews, that I not disclose, you know, the nature of the investigation, so as not to impede their progress. I'm cooperating with the FBI. And as soon as the right time comes, I'll have a, a better statement about this. I'm sorry. I know people want more information, but I'm just doing what I've been asked to do by law enforcement and my legal counsel. Yeah, and, and, Frank, and I guess people don't like that, but you're not out there running. Oh, I know hella families actually. It's like, uh, right. <laughs> and you, and you can honestly, honestly issue that in a statement. You don't have to go on camera. You don't have to say anything live at all. You don't have to do a 10 minute or interview here or a 16 minute interview. She did on KPIX or one of the other networks. Um, so yeah, you don't need to do this at all. Just issue a statement. I can't talk about this shit now. Uh, I look forward to discussing, uh, more about this investigation, uh, when I am, a bit, when I'm able to, at this point, I can say that you know, I've done nothing wrong. I don't believe I've done nothing wrong and I'm fully cooperative with the investigation period. That's it. End of story. That's, you're done. And you're done. She's like, um, I'm working on a book actually. <laughs> it's called, I know a lot of families by Sheng Tao. <laughs> She's just saying all, and it's just, it might just be my cynicism or like this just, no. it sounds like the dancing that we hear people, at, uh, like, uh, tomorrow night we're doing the intellectual dollar tree. If we would do one with a contentious interview, somebody will be dancing around like difficult questions, but the stakes aren't yeah. quite this high. I don't think in those kinds of interviews. No. And, and especially, especially with a recall happening right now, right. It's going to be on the, she just talked about, it's going to be on the ballot this, you know, so whether it's justified or not. She's going to be back on the ballot this this and, fall, and with with the recall going too, you you probably want to be very clear and very concise and say very little because um, uh, yep. video editing exists and somebody could chop up this interview, friend. Yes, absolutely. To be quite honest, create new revenue, generate new revenue, so that we can actually implement you know public safety measures and not just that, but fix our infrastructure. Did they contribute to your campaign for mayor? Um, you know, there's a lot of people who contributed to my yes or no. <laughs> oh my God. Just say yeah. the, she are, she's saying yes, right? This is yes. There's lots of people. She's saying there's more people that contributed that might've been shady. That's pretty much what she's saying. But she's saying yes, right? That's what people, that's what people hear. Yeah, 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 absolutely. So why don't you say, uh, yes, as far as I know, they are, they were a contributor to my campaign or. Because or, you write her comms director quit. Yeah. Fucking. She's like, leave me alone. My comms director quit. <laughs> my campaign i do not take money from people who have con who have uh, active contracts for the city of oakland we have really strict rules around that and oh, so shit. That so the answer is no and she might she might not have taken their money because they have active contracts He's straw donors straw donors friend yeah exactly precisely no i did not take any money from the dewongs okay, oh, okay. can you understand though that there's like that's, that so that's like actually right. one you can't really pull off lying about no, I mean, it, yeah, it's that is on the book somewhere. So more than likely, they didn't direct Victor or David Jung didn't give her money, but it doesn't mean their affiliates didn't. Concerns um, and those calls for your resignation that there are mounting concerns because there is an investigation. There's a budget crisis, the loss of the A's. For a year, Oakland didn't have a police chief. Two recalls happening in the city. I mean, at this point, there are a lot of people are, that are questioning what do you have to offer the city? Well, I think that the 18th month, the 18 months mm -hmm. that I've been in office, I have done more than many of the administrations prior to myself, including West Oakland, where no one had, no other politician has invested in West Oakland or in East Oakland. Yeah, thanks for kicking out all the raves, Shang. We have the beautiful Ramondi Park. That's going to generate tons of revenue for the city of Oakland. So again, we can actually increase our public safety services. The same thing with the Coliseum. For decades, politicians have come, come and gone and nothing has gotten 
gotten done. And so um, we all know that, you know, let's speak facts for a minute. We all know that the Oakland A's deal was already done and out the door before I even got into office. That's number one. And then number two, we have an opportunity to now work with AASEG, the African American Sports Entertainment Group, to actually get something developed there so that we can create new streams of funding. Because just like many people, especially our homeowners in the city of Oakland, we are sick and tired of having to pay high taxes, right? And so if we can figure out how to generate new revenues for the city, which the Coliseum is going to be able to do that, then we should definitely do that. And so the movement, it's not about what you talk about, it's about your actions. And so let's, judge let's me on my actions. The and the actions has been that we have been paying attention to West Oakland, to East Oakland, and we're going to be cleaning up our streets. All right, let's talk about the Coliseum for a second. But I do want to raise one point. There are a lot of people that would question that you can't equate the ballers and losing the A's together because they're not going to generate the same kind of revenue. But let's talk about the city council passing your budget. It included the sale of the Coliseum. And really, there weren't many changes in what they um, uh, in what they passed. The reduction in OPD personnel, which you had talked about, not filling some positions uh, there and at City Hall. Uh, so but that is also with the sale of the Coliseum. How realistic is it to you that you'll have the sale, a deal for the Coliseum by September if you don't have an offer for it now? You know, I'm really grateful that the majority of the city council, minus three council members, actually voted for uh, my budget. My budget really puts at the forefront public safety. We know from histor the historical past that if we actually don't fund public safety, that lives are at danger. And so what this means is that we are fully funding, making sure that the ceasefire program continues to move forward. We are at is a larger a number That's for good. our OPD officers, whereas the other council members who did not vote for the budget wanted, the, wanted to defund the police to 610 officers. That is dangerous, mm -hmm. and I will not say okay to that. That is completely dangerous. So I'm glad that the majority of the city council voted for the mayor's proposed budget with um, with small amendments to ensure that we continue to keep our community safe, and not just safe, but clean as well. So let's talk about what happens if you don't sell the you don't sell the Coliseum. Then what happens? What what's Plan B? Well, in this guy, Dave, is going to do his podcast. So, so in my proposed budget, there is a contingency plan. And so I know from, you know, being in those meetings myself that we are very close to a deal. But what I can tell you that if somehow something big happens, we have a contingency plan that is spelled out in my budget. And the reason why I said that I want that to be spelled out is because I want to be transparent with the community. And what is I the contingency plan? The contingency or GoFundMe page. There are certain dates that where we are marking to say that, you know, by a certain time frame, we need to receive this amount of money from the transaction or what have you, or with a um, with a purchase sell agreement. And so these are all triggers. These are all triggers and then you know exactly what's going to happen at the next phase. And so with that being said, I do um, I do feel very confident that this sale will go through. Did, when you took this job 18 months ago, one, did you think it was going to be this difficult? Are you disappointed in the level of hurdles that you have had to endure to get to this point? And do you even feel optimistic about continuing this job? You know, this job, it, it is a difficult job. However, the fire in my stomach as to the, my why, you know, I fight for this city because I love this city. I fight for this city, for the babies of the city, for the kids who are going to, you know, have to um, make sure that they secure jobs and, and education and what have you. I continue to fight for this city and I continue to believe in this city. And I am hopeful. I'm hopeful because we are seeing the crime data, the crime numbers, they're dropping. They're dropping because of the strategy that my administration has put forward. We are not only doing that, but we are investing in areas in the city that have never been invested in bringing in new monies so that we can have a healthier financial uh, uh, financial uh, take when we look at the years in front of us. And so for me, I'm excited for this job. I wake up every day excited and I'm still excited to this day because we're able to create meaningful impacts for the city of Oakland and the people that live in it. Mayor Tao, I thank you for your time. <clears throat> thank you so much. Bye. Boo. Yeah. Just to tag it back to public safety. It's just the theme of tonight, I guess. We need more cops is the is the theme. Uh, don't don't look at me. I didn't do anything wrong. We need more cops. Hooray, public safety. Hooray. Um yeah. Look, I love it, all the cops except for the ones that showed up at my house. Right. And this um, it's just a bad look on so many levels, right? Like, hey, look over here at the shiny monkey. Like, you know, look at look more cops, more cops. Um, we're doing this thing over here. We've got this minor league ball team over here. It's like just don't even take the interview and let things play out 
and great they passed your budget that's a that's a big win you can tout that but that's a whole separate story and you know just wait till the shit is all revealed and if you're if you're finally cleared then you can do all the interviews you want but until then statements only please <laughs> that's Up what next, i would advise her we get they're electing a mayor in san francisco and there was a, a third debate i suppose and uh kpi x news this is the highlights is that correct yes as far as i know hopefully not, not too many highlights because it's probably the same old shit. All right, back here in the Bay Area, it's only July, but San Francisco mayoral candidates just faced off for a third time on the debate stage. Our Kelsey Thord was there. As she reports, much of the night was spent pointing fingers at what candidates say the mayor is doing wrong. Well, Surprising. a room filled with mostly staffers or the different campaigns supporters, four of the top five candidates for San Francisco mayor took to the stage to debate crime and safety here in the city. I'm for crime and against safety. Question of any of these candidates. <clears throat> And they get From homelessness to drug use so to public transit, mayoral candidates Asha Safai, Daniel Lurie, London Breed, and Mark Farrell all took to the stage to answer questions about safety in San Francisco. My top priorities as I run for mayor are addressing public safety, tackling the widespread corruption in City Hall, addressing street homelessness, and dealing with the massive overdose crisis this city has faced. We need to send a message to the country and to the world that you do not come to San Francisco to deal drugs, to do drugs, or to sleep on our streets. It's actually illegal to play that if you're coming to San Francisco's song now. Much of the discussion between the candidates was focused on incumbent Mayor Breed's policies while in office. Former interim mayor Mark Farrell criticized the mayor's approach to public safety, while the mayor defended her platform. As part of my fentanyl state of emergency, we will capitalize on building thousands of new shelter beds throughout the city of San Francisco and once again focus on Project Homeward Bound. I quadrupled that project's budget when I was mayor, and this mayor has let it disintegrate. All of these guys are talking about goals and ideas that in Time's many up. cases are the work that I have been doing on the ground every single day Time's in up. order to move San Francisco forward. Time. After the debate, we found one woman in the audience who told us she wasn't yet backing any specific candidate. I asked her what she thought of the night's performances. They answered the questions well. I thought it was really rather a good debate and got an idea of where they stood on the questions. Now, given that the audience was so much made up of the different camps supporters, it's difficult to say how this debate will impact the rest of the campaign. One thing we do know after tonight, though, is that public safety remains a top issue in this race. That's your fault, local news. Correct. Everyone's just trying to out public safety each other right at this point. Um, people are criticizing. It's it's hilarious to hear like these four white dudes up there criticizing Mayor Breed's performance on public safety when that's like the one thing she can hang her hat on is that she's the fucking crackdown mayor, right? right. So she's kind of la- she's up there laughing like, "What are you all talking about? Like, I'm doing fine." <laughs> um, y'all, you know, they they if anything, I'd like to hear what Peskin has to say. I don't think I don't know if he was in that one, but no, uh, it didn't seem. Which is weird because there were cameras there. Yeah, right. <laughs> if there was a camera, usually Aaron Peskin is right behind it, um, getting his shirt sleeves tucked in. Uh, yeah, no, you, you th- I would think that he would have the progressive viewpoint, um, or maybe the not the defund viewpoint, certainly, but maybe the the alternative viewpoint in this conversation. I would right, hope just being um, to everyone's left or whatever on right, public just safety. by nature, right, just by nature of his value system. So, um, you know, hopefully he can interject that. But to now, yeah, it absolutely seems just like. I'm going to out cop the next candidate. Basically, I'm going to hire more cops than this person or that woman. So, uh, and unless something dramatically changes, it looks to me like London breed running away with it. Yeah. Especially with ranked choice voting. I do not see that. I don't see any of those dudes getting enough, um, including Peskin getting enough broad based support to, to win. Um, and, um, the so. thing about Peskin though, that we noticed that other people have to know that that motherfucker just wants to be on camera. And that's like an off putting thing, even though all of these people are running and obviously want TV time. Like he has been like when he started, I think when he announced his run, the first thing I said was, well, I heard there's going to be TV cameras in the run for mayor. (laughs) Yeah. I mean, he's going to have a podium like right outside his office. You know, uh, if he was the mayor, uh, just be ready to go at any time with, with flag lights, you know, ready to ignite. 
Um, I'm sorry, I'm taking us back to another Woe Be Gone era. LED I'm, lights. I'm surprised he's not on Twitch right now because you could have a camera <laughs> and, and, and point at him right now. Wait, here he is. Oh, shit. <laughs> Supervisor. Like, he's like, I, I heard you'll put me on, what is this, television? <laughs> what is this? I don't know. <laughs> I heard you have a viewer. <laughs> right. Hello. Hello, viewer. So um, that, well, I guess that's the, the end of the show, kind of. We have and another and some other things, I'll call it tonight. Uh, this one yeah. is funny. I can't believe they called it Cali Bunga. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is some, taking us back to our youth, right? I don't know if you were ever at Raging Waters. Oh, um, yeah. Yeah, attendee. yeah. Absolutely. Did many, many a birthday party class trip to Raging Waters, for sure, in, I, in San Jose. I remember an uh, I remember a funny incident where the, they had they had a new entertainment director, which was cool. We got to DJ there during the day, and they're like, "What happened? What would happen if we threw a party here at night?" I'm like, "People will drown." <laughs> they're like, "Are you sure?" Yes. And I'm like, "Yes, people will drown." Yes, 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 people will yes, drown. Very, very much so. There will there will be there will be fun had, and people will drown. <laughs> yeah, it was like, well, you know, I mean, if you pay me, I'll pl- I, It was like, you pay me, I'll help you promote it. But people will drown. Yeah, I mean, if you want people doing drugs and being crazy, that's what they send them to San Francisco for. Right. <laughs> so, uh, the Cali Bunga is a really stupid name. The old name, Raging Water, is a pretty cool name, actually, for a water park, I think. It stands I the think test so. Of time. Cali Bunga. They, Cali Bunga sounds like Bart Simpson named the fucking water park. Cali Bunga, yeah. It, it, it never, nothing can beat the ultimate water park name, Waterloo, from Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure, by the way. But uh, this is, you know, well, Raging Waters is pretty close. But we'll see what Cali Bunga has in store. After a lot of waiting and delays, Calabunga is finally open in San Jose, the water park. It's the revamped Raging Waters, and it welcomed its first visitor Whoa. today. The water park was supposed to open last month, but a lot of problems, including electrical issues, delayed the opening until today. Oh, did you know that electricity and water? Ah, oh, fucking of course, Matt Mayhem. Yes. there. He's like, Matt Mayhem. He's like, don't worry, Ed 209's doing security. We are open for business, finally, here. He's in his swim California. trunks, obviously. Just excited for He should go swimming in that outfit. But he will. And all. An experience that's really become a, a pastime here. <laughs> Look, he's not even on the inside of the gate. Cheapskate wouldn't buy a fucking ticket. I stand corrected. <laughs> Cali Bunga's CEO has been pretty honest about the challenges of reopening the park, calling it a money pit. But as ABC7 News reporter Ryan Curry shows us, <laughs> none of that mattered to the big crowd on hand to cool off on the hottest week of the year so far. Cue the steel guitar music, the flip flops, and the palm trees. It's a total West Coast I don't see any palm trees. branded Cali Bunga Water Park in San Jose. Or steel guitars. Yes. And we had a ball in, but I know yeah. we're going to have an even what? Better time Better today. Time. <laughs> On this people have good July, thousands from Vallejo. Shit. Park soft opening. For 38 years, people came here to have fun and cool off. But last summer, the park announced <gasps> permanent closure. But disappointment has now turned into relief and happiness. <laughs> that guy's ready. Really sad and depressed. Um, there's nothing else really to do during the summer. So, yeah, this is a really fun place. I'm glad it's reopened now. The city worked with California Dream and Entertainment to reopen this iconic summer spot. And fans are glad the largest water park in Northern California is back. I saw that this place was opening again, and I immediately bought a season pass. <laughs> Hell yeah. Try it. This place looks like it checks all the boxes of a water park. Cabanas, giant slides, and of course... I'm probably going to get a cocktail and be on the Lazy River. I think that's my speed. Why not? It is a holiday after all. Even I couldn't resist watching everyone have fun. You can feel it. It's another day where it's over 100 degrees outside, but... Dude, just what? jump. Go, go. That'd be such a cool end of the story He's... if you fucking bu- take off your fucking shirt and the microphone and just fucking go, dude. Go. You're a good I looking guy. Going. Go, go. I think he's going. Let's go. Cool off a little bit more. Here he goes. Wait, what? Oh, yeah. I'm He's wearing an aqua today. shirt. It's awesome. But what's even more awesome? The smiles on everyone's faces as they enjoy this oasis in the middle of a strong heat wave. Lots of fun, relaxation, spending time with family and friends. That's what it's all about. And that's really all you can ask for on this day. In San Jose, Ryan Curry, ABC7 News. I'm glad it's back open. I don't know. I probably yeah. won't be attending, but I'm glad it's back open. Hey, it's great. Good people from Vallejo coming to San Jose and spending their money. I'm fine with that. All right. Well, uh, we want to wrap it up here. This is a really quick one, but I just, just have to, had to follow up on this for a long time. We've been covering we should go. The, yeah, <laughs> the epic Flintstone house in Hills, Hillsboro, which anyone knows who's driven up 280 from uh, San or down from San, San Jose, San Francisco. Um, you've seen this house. There was a controversy over, you know, too many people driving past and looking at it because Hillsboro is just that kind of town. Well, there's going to be a few more people coming to it in the near future, and we're going to find out why. 
On the peninsula, the famed Flintstone House in Hillsborough is opening to the public for the first time. It is a location for a fine dining pop-up experience oh, yeah. next week. Stone Age Omakasi opened up reservations tonight, but they sold out within minutes. The experience includes a tour of the house and a 15-course tasting menu. Ooh, better be Oh, no. Thousand bucks. Stone Age Omakasi opens on July 12th. The Flintstone House is privately owned by a former publishing executive who says she only uses it for entertaining. Wow. Yeah, thousand bucks. Easy. Oh, for sure. Yeah, Absolutely. Maybe, maybe we get press passes. We are the number nine or seven or ten uh, best news podcast in California. Local news. Local news podcast. According to some, <laughs> according to some guy who uh, probably just wants us to give him money. More than likely, or to post a link to his site on our site to give him more oh, SEO. Like, a, like a, remember them old link rings and stuff back in the day where you just keep clicking the link at the top of the site? And... I, Dear sir or madam, I have reviewed your website and know how to improve your search engine optimization. Please contact me and wire me $1 million and I will get you more followers. That's like so, so much of my inbox is some version of that. Yes, so many, so many of them. It's hard and to I just spam respond and I'm like, nobody's listening to my show according to you how the fuck would i pay you <laughs> how much do you think i can actually afford to pay you for this service um click yeah click click here to learn more about my services um i am i am trapped in nigeria and need one billion dollars to escape please wire to okay well Thank you for indulging me there. I thought we, we always need to follow up when the Flintstone house is involved. Real quick from the chat. Somebody's like, I missed the events on Twitch where the streamer was drunk. Um, so it's a 9 p.m. Pacific. If you show back up here at about midnight Pacific, whoever said that in chat, you might just get some nostalgia for an event on Twitch where the streamer is drunk. <laughs> the lit producer. Because we'll be, today we'll is be the first the day where it wasn't like 90 degrees and it's actually fairly cool in the studio and I could actually have a few cocktails without like fucking sweating all over myself like a like a, like a, like a sweaty sweater. Or, or you could pull a councilman and have one cocktail and pass out and nearly miss the fucking show. <laughs> <laughs> these things these things happen. These things happen. It's a, <clears throat> it's a live TV, everybody. <laughs> or Absolutely. Like that. Hey, at least the computer didn't crash this time. Anyway. Oh, so uh, speaking of uh, you being here. Um, how do you feel about uh how do you feel about uh, reading out the show while I start to change the lights and stuff? As it was in the beginning, so it shall be at the end of the show. Thank you so much for joining us for another episode of Down Ballot. We do this every Tuesday night, except when we don't at seven thirty Pacific, followed by public comment. Please stay tuned for the producer. He's already turned on the red light. We're gonna be exploring massive uh happenings in this county of Shasta. As always, we expect that you will get vaccinated and wear a mask when it's appropriate. You don't have to wear pants. It's totally optional. We understand you got to flow free. We're going to leave you with some audible smoke, and we hope to see you back here next week. This is the Councilman, Producer Dave, signing off. Peace out. <laughs> Pick up my phone just to check and see who's calling Dress up real nice for the ladies at the bar And I'm driving in my car just to get to where they are Here at the local scene is where I plant my feet It's where I smoke my cigarette and I hold my drink I look at all my friends, they're all blazing greens Here at the front of the stage waiting for MTV Where are those guys who's standing next to me With the pipe in his hand ready to blaze for me About five minutes later we're all singing We let get the fuck up on stage and rock the scene yeah. We do what we want, and what we want is to jam. So sit back and enjoy the band. We do what we want, and what we want is to jam. So sit back and enjoy the band. Enjoy that band. I turn and head back to the bar for a refill, man, because you know where we are. We're headed out to the car To smoke another one what? And another one Woo! Now just when the magic starts kicking in I hear we left playing And you know it's time to head in Alright everybody now it's time to grab a new drink Spark it if you got it And then pass it to me yeah. We do what we want 
And what we want is to jam So sit back and enjoy the band We do what we want What we want to do And what we want is to jam So sit back and enjoy the band Enjoy that band Last up on the bill for the show tonight It's down and dirty in five So we're headed outside To spark up another joint Now who's got my light? A stoner E, of course Shouldn't you be inside? I'm all up in this bitch Being who I gotta be I'm fucked up like the US economy The truth is is that I don't think logically Stoner E take you on a psychedelic odyssey Now inside motherfuckers is rocking me And outside shit we smoke a lot of broccoli Rocky the roller, you're the sexy groovy jockin' We ain't too drunk to fuck, but don't probably do it sloppily We do what we want, what we wanna do And what we want is to jam So sit back and enjoy the band Dance with the band and enjoy the band We do what we want, what we wanna do And what we want is to jam So sit back and enjoy the band Thank you, Bob, we do.